And the uh, first presentation is going to be from Fresh Horizons and Kirklees, neighbourhood housing partnership who are based in Huddersfield. And Mike, are you going to come up and <coughs> both of you, both you and Andy, very good. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Matt McCusker, Managing Director of Fresh Horizons. Uh, Andy Ross, I'm an area housing manager with Kirklees Neighbourhood Housing. Um, when Mike and I attended the launch of the interim report, I think there was a, a partnership which did a few magic tricks and unfortunately we haven't got them. So if anyone's expecting Nelson Scott to disappear in the next 10 minutes, <laughs> to see John for a refund, I think. Um, I'm just going to give a brief introduction to to Kane actually, Kirklees Neighbourhood Housing and why we actually got into the partnership with Fresh Horizons uh, and then Mike's going to go on to explore a little bit about um, what the benefits have been to the community and also what benefits have been to his organisation and I'll give a, bit, a few examples of what the benefits have been to, uh, to Kane um, the sort of lessons that we've learned and, and the next steps really. Um, in terms of Kirklees and Kirklees Neighbourhood Housing, we're, we're in Armo, we're, uh, we're to arm's length to Kirklees Council. Um, we're, around one Elmo, formed in 2002, um, covering approximately 23,000 uh, properties um, over the towns of Huddersfield, Kirkley, uh, Huddersfield, Dewsbury and, uh, and Backley. Um, and we carry out the routine sort of tasks uh, around tenancy management and investment, uh, delivering the capital plan, community engagement, etc. In terms of why we actually um, look to develop our partnership with Fresh Horizons, we have quite a long tradition of community engagement and trying to develop community empowerment through our own um, network of tenants and residence groups. Uh, we've got about 130 active tenants and residence groups at the moment who fall under the umbrella of, uh, of the um, CAFTRA, the Kirklees Federation, um, and we support them by a, a grant every year to develop that side of the um, de developing communities really. Uh, we organise an annual tenants conference um, and training courses for community reps, tenant scrutiny panels, uh, and we have a leadership ac academy which is designed really to, to um, empower individuals within the community to take a bit of responsibility and uh, give them the skills to actually look at developing for themselves the services that they, they receive um, for their own benefit. And um, although we've got that, there are areas um, and there are areas of society and the communities which we find quite difficult to reach. Um, and one of them is uh, the community around Deaton uh, and Bracken Hall, um, where Fresh Horizons are based. And really Fresh Horizons gave us uh, an inroad really into uh, trying to engage and empower that, 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 um, that community. Um, so in particular, the vision and values, uh, our, our, our strapline is quality homes and services in successful communities, uh, and the values that we hold as a, an organisation uh, are similar to the ones that, um, that Fresh Horizons hold. So we saw some common ground there, and, and a way really to move forward um, along those lines. Um, the area we work in has also got quite a strong and, and long tradition of partnership working, so again, um, that gave us the um, ground on which to build this relationship and see, the, explore the ways in which we could try and um, develop the communities around that. And I think the biggest and uh, most important thing that we saw was that although areas similar to this across the country and this one um, see projects coming and going over the years, um, we are really in it for the long term and so are fresh horizons and we didn't want those gaps to develop in between projects coming and going. So the partnership was around really embedding um, some of the um, developing the community and the empowerment <coughs> for the long term. So that's uh, where we came from. Mike, I'm just going to hand over now in terms yep. of the benefits of the community. Yep, so um, yeah, the Deacon Brackenall area, um, <coughs> 14 years ago, we were, our super output areas were around about 250th from the bottom, so areas of, um, off the scale as far as things like crime, and health and employment issues. <coughs> uh, Fresh Horizons have been going for almost 10 years. We're now, we've got a turnover of about 1.5 million uh, and do a number of different things. We manage community facilities and other buildings within the area. We've got a construction arm that maintains those buildings, and also uh, tries to tackle some of the 5,000 empty homes that there are in Kirklees. Um, and we support people back into learning, training and volunteering, with the idea being that as we grow a social enterprise, we create job opportunities for those people. Um, and if we're developing them as we go along, they've got an opportunity take those jobs and we target recruitment very locally. So 85% of our staff live and work within the, the 
postcode that they uh, they work in. They've, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, one of the key things Andy said was about um, uh, about long termism. You know, and this, this, for for our area, 14 years ago, um, we we benefited from being in such a bad position that the local authority and all partners said. Well, it cannot get any worse. Whatever we do, it cannot get any worse. So let's try anything. So um, an area that's had a long tradition of innovation and trying to do things differently. Um, it's managed to generate uh, a regeneration project of its own through an innovative um, uh, property development scheme. Um, but I think one of the key things about deprivation in areas is about very, very long termism, about, you know, we're 14 years in to a, this and we think we're about halfway there. So one of the key things is about organisations that are there for the long term. And uh, Someone recently talked about sticking people rather than sticking plasters as being the key to um, turning areas around. And I, I think that is a key thing. So obviously there's benefits. Uh, we think we've, we bring benefits to each other. KNH has got the size of you know, 20, managing 23,000 properties, it's got that, that size um, as a customer, but as an ally it also can act to um, open doors to us that perhaps we wouldn't be able to be able to get into on our own. Um, and when we talk, talk about some of the benefits I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that. So as far as um, for us the partnership has worked really really well. We had worked together in the past and we have contractual relationships doing different things to us. But I think what this project did was make us think about moving from the ad hoc project approach to doing what we were both doing, which is, is trying to align our long-term strategies in the area about creating successful communities. Um, and that, that's one of the benefits. It's actually made us stop and think about where we're both going and where the, where the synergy between where we need to go is from. As far as community benefits that come out of just this year-long project, <coughs> um, uh, a major one for us um, is obviously one of the key things we want to do is to create employment in areas of deprivation through contracting to deliver services which we think is far more uh, viable in the long term than grant reliance. So a number of different things have happened which have created employment opportunities uh, allowed us to um, to look at long term where, <clears throat> where we can move from training schemes to full apprenticeships for instance for our construction trainees. And, and you can only really think about that if you've got a two year plus work stream that's going to allow you to take those on because as we say um, we, we work in the community in which we live <coughs> so our beneficiaries know where we live so we can't afford to make mistakes and build up people up to fail um, <coughs> so um, some of the things we've done with Kirkley's Neighbourhood Housing in the last year around refurbishment of empty properties um, linking into environmental works that are going on. Um, we had um, we stole an idea from, I don't know if there's anyone here from Colston County, we, we, um, we went up to the North East and nicked an idea off them, which is around linking, getting young black kids into volunteering, um, but incentivising them. So as they did work to clean up the area um, and do environmental works with us, they were earning hours where they could get driving lessons. So the idea being it makes them more employable, both in terms of um, in fact, they are doing regular volunteering, and we're talking about 100 hours plus volunteering, and they're also getting a the practical skill that might help them in work. Um, one of the key things, as far as benefits for the organisation, for us is concerned, um, is around this getting to the table. For two years now, we've been attempting to access homes and communities agency funding in one way or another to try and link getting rid of the blight of the empty properties in our area to uh, dis displacement of crime, reducing fear of crime, linking into employment, uh, apprenticeship opportunities. And frankly, we were getting nowhere with the registered providers that we were approaching. <coughs> now, we didn't get there with KNH all the way, but they got us to the table. Um, and we've recently heard this week, after the announcement of the housing strategy, that we're one of the few um, partnerships that's going to get some of the pre-allocation of the 100 million. So we've got a quarter of a million pounds and I think that's a valuable lesson there if there are registered providers here interested in getting into empty homes. The benefits of hooking up with a community organisation I think 
John will be able to correct me, but I think more than half of the pre-allocated £2 million pounds has gone to those organisations that are uh, registered providers that are working very closely with community-based organisations. So a real benefit there. That is going to allow us to leave, it's already levered in another 100,000. Um, we're going to go for about another 350,000 <coughs> um, within this year. And that is going to give us that opportunity about increasing the number of apprenticeships that we work with. <laughs> the real benefits there, obviously that brings benefits to our organisation. In that It gives us um, a, a, very, a very stable base on which to plan for the next few years. Um, and to grow and to increase employment, which will all benefit. I don't know, you want to say something about benefits to Kenny? Um, just on a, on a local level, obviously, we, we get that added value. So we put the contracts out to pressure items, and we don't just give them the work, we, we test them against the market. So we look at the prices they give us and the quality and the time it takes to do the work. But the local labour obviously gives us that added value of, you know, the work's gone through and we've got some, uh, a very tangible deliverable at the end of the day. So that's, that's <coughs> the big um, plus for us. Um, but we also find that the, the community themselves are starting to challenge us and the services that we provide and they're starting to get a little bit of confidence about um, their own uh, area in which they live and individuals come to us now and, and want to uh, take on some of the management of the land, the council land that's not used at the moment, can they do grow your own schemes, community orchards. These sort of little things are starting to show that, uh, you know, with a bit of... Um, a bit of confidence and some aspiration that uh, they can actually challenge the, the existing traditional infrastructure and, and, and take a bit of ownership themselves. So that's been really, um, that's been really important to us. Um, and also, as an Elmo, yeah, we're tied to the council and the culture of the Elmo is such that we are a little bit um, risk averse, if you like. So we're learning the innovation and creativity of working with partners like Fresher Items and trying to um, to develop that across the whole organisation. We look particularly. Um, at that local level, so that's been um, that's been really good. Just lessons learned, just in terms of lessons learned, um, you've got to have good trust. There's got to be a firm trust between the two organisations. That's probably the, the biggest thing, really. Uh, and we've developed that now. We're at that point where we, you know, there's, there's that implicit understanding between us. Um, also, both organisations, we've got our strengths and weaknesses, but we do complement each other. Um, so. Yeah, <coughs> also the big lesson, I've given the examples of the um, aspirations of the community and people coming forward, so it, it does actually work. Uh, at the end of the day, we're at the point now where we're starting to deconstruct some, um, some evidence forward to say that this, this partnership is actually empowering that community to, to take some um, responsibility and empower themselves. Just a final thing, just the need to move away from project base. You know, anyone called specialised as a project drives me crazy. We're not a project, we're a company, we're here for the long term. You know, let's do things strategically rather than on an ad hoc, turn it off, turn it on basis. And just one final thing, sorry, the way forward. <laughs> we're, signed, we're signing a memorandum of understanding between the two organisations. That suits us strategically. So. Um, we sit together and we look for common themes and um, you know the, a direction forward, if you like, in the longer term. So we we've, we've got that um, due to sign up shortly on for that particular document. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to look at the opportunities that the um, housing strategy and localism act might bring.